Welcome to the second lecture on exchange rates. In this lecture we'll focus on the concept of the real exchange rate. So we talked about the nominal exchange rate in the previous lecture and we, we focus on how the nominal exchange rate is actually determined by forces of supply and demand and is the price of one currency in terms of another. But the nominal exchange rate told us little about the country's purchasing power and it told us little about how this purchasing power can affect material living standards. And this is what the real exchange rate aims to overcome. It is, it helps us overcome this idea or have the neglect of this idea of purchasing power. So the real exchange rate actually takes into account the purchasing power of different countries. So let's look at the formal definition of the real exchange rate. So the real exchange rate measures the average price of domestically produced goods and services. I'm just going to denote that GNS for simplicity. Relative to the price of the average corresponding foreign produced good or service and these prices must be expressed so prices are expressed in terms of a common currency Okay, so what this is, is that it is reflected in a ratio form between 0 and maybe infinity, or technically up to infinity, but in most cases it is around 1. So this ratio is around 1, and 1 means purchasing power parity purchasing power parity. And we'll talk about the concept of the purchasing power parity exchange rate later on. But one means, when the real exchange rate is one, it means the purchasing power in both economies are the same. If it is less than one, it means the, the, um, the purchasing power of the domestic currency or the common currency that you use is greater and if it is larger than one it means purchasing power is lower and this is all a measure of the international competitiveness of certain countries and therefore this will be directly related to this idea of material living standards. So how much of goods and services you can produce, you can consume domestically compared to people, uh, compared to foreign people who earn the same amount of money purchasing the same basket of goods and services in their own country. So let's look at an example to illustrate this. So assume that Australian made items, so say the Australian made TV costs a thousand dollars and the British made TV so England that costs eight hundred dollars or to be more precise eight hundred pounds because we are working in pounds 800 pounds and we know that the current exchange rate in the direct quote so direct quote exchange rate is one pound can buy $1.50 Australian dollars 
And so, if we look at the formula for the real exchange rate, which we'll just put up here for reference, so the real exchange rate, we we'll denote that RE is the actual exchange rate, which is E, times the price of the domestic good over the price of the foreign good. So this is the domestic price. And this is the foreign price. Okay, so we need to work out here. First of all, the the the, um, the domestic price of the Australian TV. So we've got real exchange rate here, which equals E P on P F. So we know that the domestic price of a TV for Australia is a thousand dollars. And we know that the foreign price of a TV in England is eight hundred pounds. But we don't know is the exchange rate. We need it in terms of a of a common currency. So what we can do is manipulate this exchange rate so that we have it as in as an indirect quote. So we want to change this to an indirect quote. So we can know how much one Australian dollar is worth um, relative to the British pound. So as we can see now, if we divide both, so we know that one pound equals one dollar fifty. If you divide both sides by one point five, we can see that one divided by one point five is 0 0.6667 recurring so we just call that 0 0.6 0 0.67 pounds equals 1 AUD so we have it as an indirect quote here and now we can see that E the exchange rate in indirect quote would be 0 0.66667 which is approximately 0 0.67. Okay, so we just give ourselves a little bit more room. So we got, we just rub this out for the minute. Okay, we just move this up here. So let, let's just start from the beginning again, actually. So we got exchange rate is 0 0.67. P zero is a thousand dollars domestically and P foreign is 800 pounds. So we just chuck it into the real exchange rate formula and we get the real exchange rate is equal to 0 0.67 multiplied by 1000 over 800. And then you get, if you plug it into the calculator, you should get around 0. 8.3 recurring, which we just approximate to 0 0.83. So now we can see that the Australian dollar is actually undervalued by 17%. So the prices of Australian made goods and services, of Australian, of the Australian TV, in this case, is 17% or approximately 17% lower than that than that of England's. And so we can now see using the real exchange rate that the purchasing power here, the purchasing power of the Australian economy is actually greater than the purchasing power of the British ec economy. And so the real exchange rate and the country's international competitiveness, therefore, can be measured according to this formula right here. And this, the, the real exchange rate can change for either two reasons. One is a change in the nominal exchange rate. So as we can see, if the E here changes, then we will see a change in the real exchange rate here. Or it can be due to two 
the change in prices change in domestic or foreign prices so this could be changed due to inflationary effects but if either P changes or PF changes then again the real exchange rate will change but the real exchange rate measures the average price of domestically produced goods and service relative to the price of the average foreign produced good or service and prices are exp expressed in terms of a common currency in order to determine the purchasing or the relative purchasing power of each economy.